Welcome to the virtual college exploration for all New Jersey students sponsored by the New Jersey Association for College Admissions Counseling and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us this evening. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at njacac.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week and at that same website, njacac.org. And now I'd like to turn it over, our, over to our presenters. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you guys for coming to our presentation. Um, we're going to be talking about the University of South Florida and if any, and yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. So just to introduce ourselves, my name is Chrissy Pugh. I am the regional uh, recruiter advisor and I cover the territories of New York, New Jersey, Connecticut and Rhode Island, but I work uh, most with our New Jersey students and families. Um, and I also have a colleague of mine here and I'll have her introduce herself. Hi guys, my name's Jackie. Um, I'm an out-of-state recruiter advisor and I am housed on the Tampa campus. Awesome, and we also have a student ambassador with us here today and I'll have him introduce himself as well. Good evening, you all. My name is Joshua Simpo. I'm a fourth year student at the University of South Florida, majoring in biological health sciences while also minoring in anthropology. I was born and raised in South Florida, um, mm -hmm. and I'm also vice president of the USF Pre-Optometry Professional Society. Uh, it's great seeing you all, and thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, so Jackie will be here throughout the presentation specifically to answer any questions you guys may have. So if any point throughout the presentation um, you have a question, be sure to put it in that Q&A. And then we will hear from Joshua again at the end of the presentation. So to kind of kick things oh. To kick things off, uh, just a brief overview of the University of South Florida. We were founded in 1956, so we are a fairly uh, young university. And though we are young, we have an overall enrollment of about 50,000 students on our campus, uh, 37,000 of which are our undergraduate students. So we are a relatively large public research institution. But even though we are a large um, campus, we still have a student faculty ratio of 21 to 1 and an average class size of 33 students. So it is very impressive that we're able to maintain that small classroom environment size with such a large enrollment number. So those classes that you're, you will be having will be similar to what you see in high school. Um, our diversity, we really pride ourselves on that here at USF. 41% of our USF students come from diverse backgrounds. We also have students from all 50 states and 145 different countries. Um, and though we have students, like I said, from all 50 states, a large percentage of our out-of-state um, student body is coming from the state of New Jersey. So you guys definitely won't be alone if you decide to come to USF. And we do have close to 200 majors and concentrations on our campus. So um, odds are, whatever it is that you're looking for, we're going to have that program or something similar housed within one of our 14 academic colleges. So these are all of the colleges that we have. Um, at the University of South Florida, the arts, arts and sciences, business education, marine science. We also have a medical school on our campus as well. So again, over 200 programs within these 14 academic colleges. So the University of South Florida is one university geographically distributed. Um, and so what that means when I say the University of South Florida, I'm speaking about all three of our campuses. So we have our Tampa campus, St. Petersburg and Sarasota Manatee campuses. So three different campuses, one USF. Um, just going a little bit more in depth with each university or which each campus, we do have our Tampa campus and that's where lives lived larger. So our Tampa campus is kind of what you think of a large um, D1 school, kind of that feel, that's what our Tampa campus is. It's very close to the downtown um, metropolitan area. It has a very diverse student body, expansive activities, and it also has a lot of opportunity for research on this campus as well, since a lot of our academic colleges are housed here. We have our St. Petersburg campus, and that's where city meets sand. And what that means is St. Petersburg is right on the water, uh, right on the beaches. So if that's kind of more your feel, what you're looking for, I would definitely recommend St. Petersburg. Um, St. Pete's campus is also a little bit smaller than our Tampa campus. So 
if you're looking for that, maybe St. Petersburg is for you. And then the smallest of our campuses is our Sarasota Manatee campus, where big ideas start small. This is the smallest of our campuses. It only houses about 2,000 of our students, and it has a 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio, so very small classroom sizes. Whichever campus you choose is totally up to you on when you apply. However, with you guys coming from out of state, I would definitely recommend our Tampa or our St. Petersburg campuses simply because those campuses do offer uh, residence halls. They do have housing if that's something that you are interested in. University of South Florida is also America's fastest rising university. So we are uh, now ranked 46 from the US News and World Report and we are very proud um, of this fact. If you look at the rankings 10 years ago, we were actually ranked 100. And so to jump you know, to 46 in the past um, 10 years is really impressive. So we're on a good track and we're hoping in 10 years to get, hopefully get to the top. So it's just something we are very proud of. Um, another point of pride is our Judy Genshaf Honors College. So with our Honors College, it is an automatic admission criteria. So when you apply to the University of South Florida, um, and if you are interested in the Honors College and you meet the GPA and the test criteria, you're automatically going to be admitted to the Honors College. However, um, if you want to apply to the Honors College, maybe you don't meet that specific GPA and test scores, you can do that as well. Um, some items of note for our Honors College, we do have a seven-year accelerated MD and PharmD program. Um, and so what that is, is if you know that's what you're going to you want to do from the get-go, you could apply for that. And it doesn't offer you um, a direct admissions into the medical school, but it does guarantee you an interview and kind of puts you on that track and gives you, you know, the resources you need to succeed. In the same way, we have another accel accelerated program with our College of Law, if that is something you're interested in. And we do have additional scholarships for our honor students as well. So on top of the admission scholarships and financial aid, there are additional scholarships if you are within the honors college. And there's also a living and learning community for our honors college. And we are currently in the process of building a new honors college building on our campus. So that is in the works and it should be done within a couple years. Kind of switching gears to campus housing. Um, so we do have residence halls, like I said, on our St. Petersburg and our Tampa campuses. However, it is not required for our first year students to live on campus. But if that's something you want to do, definitely have that option. Um, we have traditional style residence halls. So what that means is that you and your roommate would share a room and then you would share a bathroom with your entire floor. Um, those bathrooms are cleaned every day. And we also have suite style residence halls. What that means is that you and your roommate would share a room. You would have a suite mate and their roommate share a room. And kind of in the connecting space here in the middle, that would be your bathroom. So that would be four people to one bathroom ratio. And those are cleaned weekly by our university housekeeping. We also have apartment style residence halls. Um, that's kind of self-explanatory. It would be, you would have your own room, your own bathroom, um, and you would also have roommates, but you would also have a living area and a kitchen space. So um, in addition, we have our living and learning communities. Um, so I spoke of that previously with having an LLC for our honors college. What a living and learning community is, is it puts you on a floor with people of the same interest or major as you. Um, so this is a really great opportunity for you to build community, to meet other students who are like-minded. And you will also have an RA, a resident assistant, and typically um, they are a upper level student in that program so they could act as a mentor to you as well. USF Student Life. So Student Life is something I like to touch on. We do have over 700 student organizations on our campus. So that ranges from academic clubs, um, something within your college, um, to Greek life. There's definitely something for everyone on our campus. and You will definitely find your niche on campus. If there's not a particular club you are interested in, um, you could actually get you and 10 friends together and a faculty member, and then you could create your own club. Um, I've seen some pretty unique clubs since we have so many of them. We are NCAA Division I Athletic School, um, so we play in the American Conference. And along with that, I will say that all of our athletic events are free for students. So if you are wanting to attend you know, a football game, a basketball game, anything like that, that is free for USF students. 
if you are interested in sports and playing sports, but you don't necessarily want to play at that D1 level, we do have our club and intramural sports teams. Um, so these are less competitive, but more fun. Um, a club's team is going to be similar to what you would have in high school. You would need to try out, but you would get to travel a little bit depending on where the matches are. Um, intramural sports is where you would put together your own team with your friends and you could play sports like flag football, uh, table tennis, beach volleyball. Um, so those are definitely options as well. We do have our bull market on campus and the bull market happens every week, every Wednesday, I believe, um, and different clubs and organizations, local businesses will come out. And it's really an opportunity for um, those student organizations to get connected to other students on campus. And again, just a way to foster community and really connect all of our student body. We do have a Publix on campus, so if you guys are not familiar with the Publix, that is a very popular, um, if not the most popular grocery store in the South, especially in Florida. And luckily our students have one right there on our campus, so if they are, you know, needing to get their groceries or they need to go and get a pub sub, that's my personal favorite, they can just walk out of their residence hall and it's right there for them. And lastly, we have our week of welcome. So the week of welcome happens the first week of every semester, um, since that's typically where you would have a syllabus week. Um, and so what that is, is the student organizations and our student government association throws on um, different events throughout the week, again, just to help build community and connect you back to the student body. So kind of switching gears now, we're going to talk about the application process and admissions information. And so there are three ways in which you could apply to the University of South Florida. You could apply using the Common App, the Coalition App, or applying on USF's admissions website. It does not matter which one you choose, we're gonna look at them all the same. Um, it's just whatever is easiest for you, apply that way. Our application is relatively simple. It just requires three things. We're going to need your application fee or an application fee waiver, your high school transcripts, and your official ACT or SAT test scores. That's it. So once you submit all of that, your application is complete. Um, our application is strictly based on academic credentials, and because of that, we do not consider any sort of supplemental information such as um, letters of recommendation or personal statements. We don't need that unless we specifically ask you for it. Um, so with the official high school transcripts, um, they have to come directly from your school to us at USF. And the fastest way to get those to us is going to be through email or sending electronically. And you could have your school or counselor email them to admissions at usf.edu or to myself directly at acpu at usf.edu. For our test scores, those need to come directly from College Board. So you can see the SAT and ACT code on there as well. So the evaluation process, kind of what happens after you submit your application, once you send us those transcripts, um, you're gonna send us a high school transcript and it's gonna have a weighted and an unweighted GPA on there. We're gonna look at that and we're gonna say, that's great, that's awesome. And then we're never gonna look at that ever again. What we're gonna do is recalculate your GPA using our standards um, and looking at solely your academic core courses. So that's gonna be your maths, your Englishes, your sciences. We're gonna look at those sorts of classes. So unfortunately, classes like PE, yearbook staff, yearbook staff, newspaper staff, unfortunately those didn't make the cut for our academic core courses and those won't be included in your recalculated GPA. However, we will take into consideration if you took honors, um, AP, IB, dual enrollment, we will take all of that into consideration and add a half a quality point or a full quality point onto that score. Um, so it will be on a 5.0 scale. As for your test scores, um, again, we accept the ACT or the SAT, either or, and we do super score. And what a super score is, is that we will take your best individual score from all of your tests to create your overall best composite score. Um, so it is in your best interest to send us all of your scores. That way we can get you your best possible super score. Um, the admitted student freshman profiles. What this is, is since we are application is strictly based on academics, um, we, however, we don't say, you know, you need this GPA plus this test score equals admission to USF. We don't do that. We kind of have a range of what we're looking for. And because of that, we have our profiles here, which give you an idea of what the average admitted student looked like um, who got accepted to USF last fall. 
So last fall, fall of 2020, our admitted freshman profile had a high school GPA uh, starting at a 4.1 with an SAT of a 1270 and an ACT of a 28. Um, again, this GPA shown here is that recalculated core G GPA, and then the SAT and the ACT scores are super scored. Um, you can also see our summer admitted freshman profile. It has a high school GPA of a 3.7, SAT an 1160, and an ACT of a 24. Now, you'll see that our summer profile is a little bit lower than our fall profile. Um, they're still great scores, they're still great numbers. It's just that we don't see as many applicants for our summer semester. Um, we get a majority of our applications for the fall semester. And because of that, fall is definitely more competitive than our summer semester. But if you're interested in coming for the summer semester or you're thinking, hey, my GPA, my test scores are more so around the summer profile, that's totally fine. Um, we have a specific program for our out-of-state students called our ACE program. This stands for our Summer Academic and Cultural Engagement Program. And basically what this is, again, it's just for out-of-state students and allows you to start your classes a little bit early before you begin in the fall. So you would start mid-July, so it's not right at the beginning of summer, but you would start in mid-July and take six credit hours before you begin the fall semester. <clears throat> Excuse me. And while you are taking those six credit hours, you would also get to study abroad for one week. So we've had study abroad locations in Ecuador, Costa Rica, Canada, and some within the states like Washington, D.C. And these locations you could kind of see in the pictures there. Those are from those study abroad trips. Um, another benefit to doing the ACE program is going to be um, the fact that you are taking credit hours over the summer, the Florida Board of Governors requires that each student in the state of Florida um, or that is attending a Florida university has to take a summer semester before they graduate. Um, so doing this ACE program kind of checks that off before you even start so you don't have to worry about that. So before we go to the next slide, I want everyone to just take a deep breath in. Let's let that breath out and let's look at the tuition and fees. Just wanna make sure we're all calm before we start talking about uh, tuition here. So small price tag, big value. If you look at um, the tuition and fees for an out-of-state student, which is what you guys would be since you're coming from New Jersey, um, your total costs for housing, um, tuition and fees, housing and meals, books and supplies and miscellaneous costs is gonna run you at around $34,000. Now. That is a large amount. However, let's take into consideration everything in that is including. That is all your tuition, housing, books, all of that in that 34,000 number. And that number would be split, you know, half in the fall, half in the spring. And it could be less depending on what residence halls you choose, what books, or what other supplies you need as well. Um, but something to note with that 34,000 number, um, we have one of the lowest tuition rates in the country. The entire state of Florida has relatively low tuition rates and we are ranked number 15 for best value in out of state public colleges. Um, we do offer scholarships, grants, waivers, loans, work study, over $500 million worth of that. And again, our, our out of state tuition rate is highly competitive. If you take that number and compare it to other out of state schools you're considering, um, ours is relatively low and sometimes even cheaper than some schools in state tuition. Um, one of the ways in which you can uh, lower the cost of tuition, however, is going to be through scholarships. So we do offer freshman admissions scholarships, um, and these are all merit-based scholarships. So in order to qualify for our scholarships, what you need to do is apply before the deadline of February 15th, and you need the associated GPA and test score. Um, and on this chart here, you would be looking at the ones for non-Florida residents. Um, those are the ones for our out-of-state students. And so if you have, let's say, a 3.5 GPA and a 1210, and you've applied before February 15th, you are gonna qualify for the Green and Gold Scholars Award. Our awards start at 6,000 per year and go up with our director and presidential awards. Um, and they are a four-year award. So you could see the amount you would be getting per year. Again, that amount would be half in the fall, half in the spring. And then you could see the total four-year amount. So. Um, you could see how much you could be saving at the end there. So kind of winding down now with our freshman application deadlines. These are the deadlines that I really want you guys to remember. Um, first one is November 1. That's our priority application completion deadline. So what I really want to stress about November 1 is just making sure you have your application submitted by that date. 
January 1 is the priority deadline for financial aid consideration. If you know you're going to be using the FAFSA and using federal aid um, for your college, definitely want to apply by January 1. And then February 15th is the big deadline. That is the application completion deadline to be considered for admission scholarships, the ones we just talked about. And if you want to qualify for admission scholarships, you have to apply by February 15th. That means that you've submitted your application, the application fee, um, transcripts, and test scores. We need all of that to have a complete application. If something happens and you cannot submit your application by February 15th, just know that you do have until March 1st to submit that application. And then another deadline, it's not listed on here, May 1. That is our um, enrollment deadline. So May 1 is the last day for you guys to tell us if you wanna be a part um, of our Bulls family. So um, that's pretty standard across the board. So just make sure you let us know before May 1. Virtual campus tours. So I know given the state of uh, our country right now, it's a little hard to travel and make your way down to Florida. However, if maybe you are in Florida or if you have family in Florida, um, you can stop by our campus. We are offering self-guided tours. Or you could stop by the admissions office, but we also offer our virtual campus tours of all three of our campuses. So if you are interested in taking a virtual tour, you could um, put a question in our Q&A box um, and my colleague Jackie will definitely give you the link to our virtual campus tours. Um, those are very thorough and in depth and show you different buildings on campus. You could go inside and you'll see like a 360 view um, and there's different videos and different students that tell you about the campus as well. It gives you a really good idea of what campus looks like without actually being on campus. Um, couple. Uh, last things here, staying connected with us on our social medias. We are at Admissions USF on all social medias. Um, our YouTube has a lot of great videos of what our campus looks like and again hearing from different people on campus um, and on our Instagram. Sometimes we have student takeovers so they could let you know again a student's perspective to things. And then if you guys have any questions at all whatsoever about um, campus about the application process uh, again be sure to get in contact with me my contact information is right there on the screen like i said i work with new jersey students and families all the time so i'm really um, here to help you guys with anything you might have so this concludes my presentation thank you guys for listening to me uh, speak i'm going to stop sharing my screen here and me and josh and jackie will be here to answer any questions you guys may have Christy, there was a question about most popular majors. What would mm -hmm. you say is one of our most popular? Yeah, great question. So um, popular major, like I said, we have over 200 different majors on our campus. So there's a lot to choose from. The ones that I'm consistently talking to students about, um, it's gonna be our College of Business, uh, just because we have so many majors within that college. We see a lot of students go there. Um, engineering, another unique program I like to talk about is our marine uh, science program, marine biology program. Just because of our proximity to the water, it's really unique for our students to be able to have that opportunity to actually go and do their labs you know, out on the water or do their research with professors there. Great question. Okay. Um, so now I'm gonna hand it over to Josh, if he would, um, just since he is a current student at USF, I just kinda wanna hear um, what is student life like on campus? What can you tell us, you know, how that's going? Yeah, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So student life as a student at USF, well, I'm a fourth year student, so I've experienced a lot of different mm -hmm. things. One thing I can say is USF has provided me the opportunity to do a handful of things I never imagined I would able was able to do in college. Um, so I grew up in South Florida, so I wanted to go to USF because I knew that the sunny days would definitely be there. The majority of the time, it's about 70 degrees, so you don't get too much snow, but it's always sunny and there's always a lot of things to do in the Tampa Bay area. Additionally, because we're in a city like Tampa, there's so many opportunities to do things off of campus as well. So as a student, um, our on-campus uh, student involvement center does a lot with letting students know what's going on in the city of Tampa. Um, downtown is a, just a little while away. Um, and our on-campus bus system will take you to some areas around campus. So I like to go to Sparkman and Morks. I like to go to um, some other places downtown, get a bite to eat, a lot of different areas for us to study at. And on top of that, one of my favorite things about being in Tampa is the fact that we're right on the water. Um, 
And we mentioned, uh, Christy mentioned that a little bit earlier about the mean biology major, but just for fun, I always grew up where the beach was about 10 to 15 minutes away. Um, the closest beach is about 20 minutes away. And um, it's really accessible and there's other beaches for you to go to. So, I mean, some of those things to do off campus are one, some things that keep me active um, and really involved um, off campus. But on campus, um, starting an organization on campus is super easy. Um, the office, uh, the student government makes it really, really easy for you to go ahead and start a constitution. And as long as you have six other friends to do so, you can start any organization. So we have a chocolate lovers organization on campus. A student said, hey, I love chocolate so much. I want to start an organization and they will fund you to do so. Um, there are other organizations you can start. I started my, or, my, old, my own sorry, community service organization on campus. Uh, but again, that's another opportunity that USF provided me that I didn't think I was going to necessarily get to do when I was in high school. Um, other things that I really wasn't involved in in high school, I was in band. I played trumpet. I played guitar for a few years. But when I got to college, I always said I wanted to play soccer. Um, so our intramural sports system is really amazing. There's no experience necessary. Um, so I joined, went ahead and started a team with my uh, a couple of freshmen that lived in my building. Um, we lost every single game that semester. It was, it was, it was pretty tragic. Um, but we played uh, three and four semesters after that, and we actually made it to the IM championships that last semester I played. So again, I love soccer. I'm a huge fan. And USF provided me with the opportunity to get involved in something that I never thought I would be able to do. So um, USF is really a prestigious university in terms of academics and research, and we want students to succeed. But we also want students to enjoy their time and kind of, you know, step into some new waters and try some new things out. And I thank USF for that uh, experience and opportunity. So my tip of advice when you come to USF, if you come to USF, um, to don't be afraid to try things that are new. Join a new sports team. Maybe learn about another culture. Um, USF has a lot of opportunity, and, and I think it's in students' benefits to get involved in those things. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. That was really great information. I could definitely attest to, you know, just being in Tampa, even though I'm not in Tampa. I've definitely visited campus quite a lot, and I really love when I go down there. You cannot beat uh, Florida weather, especially up here in New Jersey. You guys know um, it's cold, and we do get snow, but in sunny Tampa, Florida, it's really nice. Um, it's really convenient. Like you said, the beaches are really close to Tampa campus, so that's about a 45-minute drive away. So I know that's something that a lot of students go and do on the weekends is just head to the beach, which is really nice. We had another question about um, ROTC, and yes, we do have that on the Tampa campus. We have it for Army, Navy, and Air Force, and I put the link in there too. Great question. So yeah, we do offer scholarships um, through the academic colleges. So once you come to campus, if that's something you're looking for scholarships outside of admission scholarships, we do have those as well. And our financial aid and scholarships office can uh, definitely help you, you know, access those scholarships. I guess, Josh, another question for you. Um, what would be your favorite place to eat on campus? So one thing about USF is with the funding that we receive, we do a lot to support our students and add new restaurants on campus. When I first like, you know, came on campus as a freshman, I was living on campus, my favorite place to eat was Champion's Choice. That's one of our dining halls on campus. Um, I loved it because they make fresh peanut butter every day. So best peanut butter jelly sandwiches I've ever had. But on top of that, they have a build your own pasta station every single day. So uh, in my freshman year, in between classes around 12 o'clock, I'd go in there, get that, and then going to the, the second half of my day. Now as a senior, we've added new restaurants like Chick-fil-A, uh, new full server Chick-fil-A, which is also great. But my favorite spot is the burger fry that we have on campus. Um, it's a whole burger fry with all, you know, everything you get off campus. You have, we have this on campus, the milkshakes we have, and then the burgers are just so amazing. They take their time making those. And I think like, usually I have a ritual. Uh, my junior year, I, I would go there every Friday after work. Uh, <laughs> I use my dining dollars, get a burger fry sandwich and just sit there and study or hang out with friends. And that's right at the village, one of the newest spots on campus. But burger fry is definitely one of the coolest places other restaurants away on campus subway that's a place that I'm always at um, we have two subways on campus Starbucks all over the place so there's a lot of different options to eat um, and I always say try everything out and then you kind of figure out what you want um, the most of and what you want to spend the most of your money and time at I agree with the Starbucks there's at least five around there I go there all the time um, Josh I would I always like to ask students what's their favorite memory that they've had at USF <laughs> 
I've had a lot of memories at USF. Um, favorite memory. I think I'm going to take it back to when I played intramural soccer. Um, again, I've never played like sports. I was always involved in band in high school. Um, I think my favorite memory is when we finally played that last semester. Um, on campus, there's a tradition. If you win the championships for your intramural sports team, whether that's lacrosse, whether that's flag football, soccer, if you win that division, you end up getting an I Am Legend shirt. So the Iron Legend shirt is something that you get to wear on campus. And if you wear that shirt, students around campus know you as the guy who played on a championship team, something like that. Um, you're basically the best of the best and everyone knows your team name. So getting to championships, coming so far from not losing every game my freshman year to playing junior year and getting that far, um, it was definitely an experience. That's when I really realized, wow, US have you know, created a home away from home for me. Um, I realized that fresh, my freshman year, but I really felt that my junior year when we were playing soccer and I said, I, you know, I barely met these guys. I didn't know these guys a few semesters ago and now we're super close and we're, we're, we're here. We're at the penalty line. We're, hold, we're holding hands, locked arms and, and we're getting ready to kind of win it. I think that was one of the best experiences I've had at USF. And I'm going to remember that from years from now when I'm an alumni <laughs> still chanting USF. Yeah, that brings up a good point because, you know, we are a big university, but being involved on that team made it feel a little bit smaller. So when you're on campus, it doesn't feel so huge. Not at all. I definitely say that the campus, you know, Though the statistics say that it's very large, USF does a really good job at making it seem like everything is kind of sectioned together. Um, so for example, I may play, you know, intramural soccer and I have a minor in anthropology. I'm usually in that area part of the, part of the time. But when I'm back in the inter interdisciplinary science building and in those science classes, um, semester after semester, I'm seeing the same faces. So it's not like I'm meeting a huge group of new people every single semester. I feel like I've taken the same couple of classes, the same people every semester. And that's because as you go on in your major, you start to see the same faces. You'll see the same professors as well. I mean, a lot of people believe that when you go to one class, say you're taking a general chemistry class and you're in a lecture hall, you might not see the professor after the next semester. At USF, that's not the case. I've met professors and then the next semester, they're riding their bike to from one lecture hall to the next lecture hall. And they say, hey, Josh, how are you doing? Or I'm studying in the library and they're there as well. So it's definitely, you know, one of those large universities that does a really good job at making it feel like it's a very small university. That's a good point. Something I like to tell students is just um, there's a lot of benefits to going to a large public research institution like USF, but the cool thing about the big school is like you can make it smaller. If you go to a smaller school, you can't like make it bigger than it actually is. You know, everything is right there in your own little bubble. So just keep that in mind as well. I know um, the large university can be intimidating, just the numbers and thinking about it, but just remember that you could definitely make it feel small. You can make it feel like a home. Um, something else I like to talk about is our study abroad opportunities. Um, so I'm not sure, Josh, if you have any experience with study abroad um, or if you have studied abroad. Um, Unfortunately not, I haven't had the opportunity to. Gotcha. Um, but study abroad is still something that a lot of our students at USF do um, get to participate in. We have study abroad in more than 25 different countries. Um, and those programs range from one week long to a year long program. So if you're wanting to do, you know, a shorter service learning trip, something like the ACE program that has that shorter trip, we have those options, but we also have year long programs. So if you know you want to study abroad, um, let's say Italy, we have programs like that for you. Um, you could also go and research abroad or participate in an internship abroad. Um, these are also opportunities as well. So you don't necessarily have to study abroad. You could do things like research or um, intern as well. I'm just thinking of other um, study abroad opportunities that are coming mm -hmm. to my mind. There's just so many. So mm -hmm. I know for College of Business for Entrepreneurship, they went to Barcelona. Mm -hmm. um, our marine biology students go to the Caribbean, of course. Um, and then our public health students go to Japan every year uh, to and, and they're all doing research. So um, that's research that that students can start their freshman year. Um, you can add that to your resume right away, maybe even get some of your research published by the time you graduate. Um, so it definitely has some benefits going to a, a tier one research institution. Definitely. Um, 
Josh, I have another question for you, just because, like I said, you're the current student. You could really tell us what campus is like right now um, and in your years past. But what is your, where, I should say, where is your favorite place to study on campus? I love that question because mm -hmm. I, I have a list of places that I go on campus. Um, so as a freshman, the typical place was the library. The library was amazing. Um, I would go to the second floor typically after the hours of 6 p.m., 7 p.m. when the smart lab would close, which is our studying hub on campus. And once those computers were open, I would just stay there and study, pretty quiet area. I like to be in a very quiet area when I study. But now as I'm an older student, I found other places that students don't typically know about. So I'll give you a couple of tips. Um, the College of Education, a lot of students don't go there, but if you go to the College of Education, um, outside of the College of Education, there are these nice benches and it's really a serene and grassy area that you can study at. Um, and again, that's a really quiet area for you to study. Other places to study at, um, the Marshall Student Center has a uh, gaming lounge. They call it the Skypad. It's on the fourth floor of the Marshall Student Center. But typically students aren't gaming at, you know, seven, eight, nine in the morning. So what I would do is I would get some coffee, head up there. Um, they have these really, really nice tables and very comfy couches. I'd study there in the morning time. Um, so there are a lot of different hidden spots to study at, other larger areas to study at. The library is an amazing resource for that. Um, I like to say there's a floor for everybody. If you like to be really loud and hang out and, you know, eat pizza and stuff, the first floor is where it's at. Um, but as you go up, it, it gets quieter and quieter. So the fourth floor and the newly renovated floor is another favorite, one of my favorite spots, especially when I'm studying, you know, maybe studying really late at night. Um, they have these really cool USB light stations and, and you can plug your charger in there and then turn those on and just get really comfortable. Also, the nap pods are up there and uh, I tested them out my sophomore year when they got added and then forgetting that I snored. So <laughs> I got woken up saying, hey, you're a little loud. And I moved down to a quieter area or louder area of the library. But if you want to study laying down with your blanket, I students do it all the time. So I like to say there's definitely many places, many options for you to do. But my favorite places are usually outside, um, especially during golden hour. USF uh, has the benefit of the sunsets. A lot of students seeing sunsets and parking garages and things like that. But I like to study during that time because it gets pretty quiet during the afternoon. And I kind of can find a bench around USF's area and just study, get things done. I have another one for you, Josh. Sorry, I'm <laughs> putting you on the spot. But um, how about the safety on campus? Like uh, when I've been working there for over a year now, I, it's a very safe campus. We have our very own police department right there on campus. So can you speak more on how it's felt safe for you? Yeah, 100%. Um, so that's definitely another thing that um, you want to consider when going to a large university. And I've never felt unsafe um, at USF. We have a lot of resources for students to make sure that they do feel safe. Um, and they feel like they're being heard while they're on campus. One of the main things and things that I say students should take care of, I would take advantage of um, as a freshman is the safe team that we have. So safe team runs from the hours of 5.30 p.m. to 2 o'clock in the morning every single day. And what this is, is like your personal transportation. It's a golf cart that you can take. Um, it'll take you from one area of campus to the other area of campus is no questions asked. So say you're studying really late at the library one night um, and your residential hall is on the other side of campus. You can dial 1-800-813-974 uh, and the word safe. And then they'll go ahead and pick you up, um, ask you where you are, and then take you to your next location. They take about 10 minutes to get there. It's almost like our on-campus Uber. Um, and again, like some students my freshman year, I never felt unsafe, but I was just really lazy. I wanted to get from one side of campus to the other side of campus. So my roommates and I had a ritual of just calling them, getting on the safe team, golf cart, and heading to my next location. Again, they don't question it. Um, they will bring you around campus. So that's one a resource that we have. We also have the Safe app. The Safe app is you know, not a requirement for students to use, but the way the Safe app works is if you know it takes you about 10 minutes to get from from one side of campus to the other side of campus, um, you can set a timer for 10 minutes. Um, at the end of those 10 minutes, the alarm will go off. And if you don't turn the notification off, they'll send you a text message just to check if you're all right. It's almost like an assistant, someone's virtually walking with you. If you don't answer the text message, they'll call you. And then from there, a police officer will come and find you on campus to see if you are all right. Again, I've never used that app, but it's another resource that I feel like helps students feel like they have a safe of mind. Um, and it's a free resource. So I say, why not have it on your phone and just have it just in case. But uh, in, in, in general, being in Tampa, and being at USF, I've never felt like there was a time that I was unsafe. There's always, um, you know, an officer parked somewhere on campus or even the security that patrols outside of our residential halls. Um, so I think it's a really safe campus. And I, and I, um, I, I again, hope you guys take advantage of safety. And that's something I, I, I always advocate for. <laughs> that was great. Good point. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anyone on here is an adrenaline junkie, but we are about a mile down the street from Bush Gardens. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of students take full advantage of that. Um, they get really good discounts. Um, so I know students, they'll get an annual pass for really cheap. 
and I've heard that they'll get done with a test or you know something with class and to let off some steam they just get on the the bull runner which is our bus and it takes them over to Bush Garden so definitely something to take advantage of as a student as well. <laughs> Definitely, for sure. I remember when I was um, on campus earlier this year, back in February, um, I was able to go and you could see like the giant roller coasters from like really close to campus. So that's a really great, you know, like Jackie said, if you need to go and just let off some steam, have some fun, that's an option there. But we also see a lot of students participate in internships or work at Bush Gardens. Um, if that's something you're interested in, maybe you're interested on the hotel and tourism, kind of that kind of major. These are good opportunities for you and they are really like in your backyard so that's another good benefit to campus as well and being in a large metropolitan city for sure. Um, Josh do you have any advice about living in a residential hall or benefits to living on campus or kind of talk about that? Yeah um, so I always say that you know even though it's not required for freshmen to stay on campus their freshman year mm -hmm. I recommend that all students do stay on campus, at least for one semester, if not the entire year. Um, I've met so many amazing people and I think I got acclimated with being away from home and at, in Tampa and also at USF, just from being on campus. I remember moving in with my parents, then they finally left. It was like Sunday. And then before classes started that Monday, I was already walking around campus with friends that I met on, on the floor, which wasn't everyone. I met maybe five people the first day and then just going to Chick-fil-A and maybe and we went to the mall the first day, I believe. So I always say, you know, you might not be the biggest extrovert, you might be an introvert, but still live on campus. You never know who you're going to meet. And those are people that you'll meet and take with you, hopefully until that you graduate. Um, the same friends that I had my freshman year, um, I still talk to and hang out with frequently my senior year. I did pick up other friends through soccer, through um, becoming a tour guide on campus, but you meet and have a lot of long lasting conversations and relationships with people that you meet in your residential hall your freshman year. I also recommend that, you know, don't look down on any of the different styles. Um, there's a style for everyone. So we have traditional style, we have the apartment style, and then we also have on um, the suite style. No style is better than the other style. They just have different benefits. So with traditional style, you know, um, it is a traditional style, but that doesn't mean it's old. Some of our newest residential halls on campus in the village is our traditional style. Um, and it's really, really nice being in the village. The village has everything on that you really need in that one area on campus. And same for the apartment style. So I definitely say look at all of your options and see what they have to offer. Um, and then just choose the one that's best for you. But I recommend 100% living on campus your freshman year. Um, you know, you can't replace that experience that you get from living on campus if you can. Um, it really kind of gets you involved and throws you right into the water of being a bull. And it helps you feel kind of acclimated and what it feels like to be a bull um, at USF. Great, thank you for talk talking about that. I know I personally lived in a traditional style residence hall um, my first year and I wasn't too excited about that. But one of the benefits, you know, living in the, that traditional style where you share a community bathroom is really that you, you really do make friends a lot easier. It's hard, you know, when you go to the bathroom and you're brushing your teeth next to someone and then you see that someone in class later on, it's like, hey, like you have a connection there. So again, don't, you know, look away to any of the residence halls. However, if you are wanting a particular style, definitely my advice to you would be to confirm your enrollment early. Um, the sooner you confirm your enrollment, the sooner you get to, you know, sign that housing contract. And then from the housing contract, there are waves in which you would go in and choose what room or what residence hall um, you want. And, you know, obviously those spots fill up. So as they fill up, you will have less options to choose from from there. Um, but we are winding towards the end of the, the session here. Um, so I just wanna leave you guys with one thing. Um, Jackie, Josh, is there one thing if a student were to come to Tampa on the weekend, what's one thing they should go or check out? Well, I mean, I'm always just gonna say you gotta stop at the beaches. Um, mm -hmm. So that, I'm going to say, oh, take the trip to Clearwater Beach or St. Pete mm -hmm. Beach. And that's probably because I'm originally from Illinois and I, I moved here mm -hmm. and I, I love it. So um, I'm a beach girl. So I'm going to say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one place. There's a lot of places and a lot of things to do in Tampa. Um, if there's one thing I'd say you, you should do, I would say it'd be to check out the downtown and, and Ybor district area. Um, mm -hmm. They have a lot of different venues and a lot of places to eat at. 
Um, and it can definitely will show you the different culture that we have in Tampa. Um, it kind of will kind of get you a feel of what Tampa is like, but also what it's like to kind of be in an area where it's really, really diverse. I'm um, gonna meet so many different people and see what it's really like living in Tampa. So one of those things for sure. Also the beach, I would second that. Um, the, the beaches are, Clearwater Beach is something that will sell anyone on South Florida. Um, going to one of the beaches, especially if you're coming from, um, you know, the Northern area of the United States, seeing beaches and seeing how different Florida <laughs> beaches are, is something that'll definitely win you over. <laughs> definitely, um, New Jersey beaches are a lot different than Florida beaches. So if you're down there, it's definitely something to check out. Um, but I really wanna thank you guys for listening to us. Uh, listening to us. I wanna thank Josh for all of his information and perspective as a student. Um, and again, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me, um, admissions at usf.edu or acpu at usf.edu. Thank you so much for that very informational session, everyone. And just to close out this session, I just want to go over some couple other things. Again, thank you for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions at njacac.org. In about a week, you'll be able to find the sessions recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at njacac.org. Thank you and have a great evening, everyone. Thank you.